Now I already know what you're thinking. Who is that handsome gentleman right there? That tall, hunky, lengthy gentleman. Well, let me tell you something. I'm Jay from Reapers Electronics, and today I'm going to be showing you a few things that you need to know before you decide to buy a PlayStation 5. All right, so starting off, uh, there's tons of versions of the PS5 already. There's the digital and there's the disc. That's not what I mean by a ton of different ver versions. Um, basically, they made like a bunch of different models already. Some of them have like different heat sinks inside of them. Uh, some of the boards are set up differently, the motherboards and stuff like that. Um, and the way that you can tell the difference is uh, by opening up the console, really. Um, I'm not going to open this entire console and show you everything. However, I will tell you this. You can tell if you got one of the first uh, models or not, and um, also you can tell if you have one of the newer models uh, by this little piece of tape here. Uh, really, really something simple that you can just look out for um, without having to look up all the numbers here on the bottom. Uh, if it's a digital version, this little piece of tape is going to be a square pretty much. It's not going to be this shape right here. Uh, if it's a disc version, it'll also be a little square, which I have another console that I could show you real quick. Alright, so this is the uh, one of the newer versions. As you can see, this little piece of tape here is a square. This is one of the disc versions, um, which is fine. You know, disc and digital is fine. It's just preference on whether you want a disc or not whenever you are playing your game. A lot of things are digital now. It's a little bit easier to do that because everything can be saved to your profile. Um, However, you know, some people do prefer discs so that they can play games, watch movies and stuff like that and have something tangible there. Um, but this is one of the newer models, one of the later models, had a long strip here for the tape. Um, those models aren't very reliable and I'll go ahead and show you why. Uh, I may actually disassemble this one to show you um, why this model is so much better. So this is one of the newer PS5s that were released, this is the God of War edition. Um, the, the SSD here, everything looks the same from the outside besides this piece of tape here. Uh, there are a couple differences, but for the most part, everything looks the same. But these ones are more efficient. The only reason I say that is there's a huge problem with overheating on the PlayStation 5s. Um, and it's due to a liquid metal inside of the motherboard, which I'll go ahead and show you real quick. All right, so this is actually a motherboard from one of the older models of the PlayStation 5. Um, right here in the middle is the liquid metal that they used to cool it down. Um, as you can see, it's like shiny there. Uh, this stuff, uh, you know, you can see here on the bottom. So this is, a, this is the way the board sits in the console, right? So you can see that it's spilling out through the bottom. It's obviously a mess at the top and stuff like that too, but most of it sits at the bottom and it creates a little area most of the time right here towards the top center of the APU there where uh, there'll be a bald spot and where that bald spot is it's just basically metal so it'll be metal touching metal um, because on the other side there's also the heat sink and so the heat sink sticks up here to this little part here and that also has liquid metal on it but what tends to happen is whenever the console's standing up that liquid metal will sink to the bottom, doesn't cause good heat distribution, and so then it causes issues with overheating, as you can say, which basically, if you go to play a PS5 version game or anything like that, it's too demanding for the console, the console will automatically shut down, um, and that's really annoying, and it's pretty irritating. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you on the older consoles what you can do to prevent that. All right, so we're back to the older console here, as you can see by the tape there. Um, so this one's a digital one, so it's not as easy to tell. Um, but when you go to lay this down, and the reason why you want to lay this down is you want that liquid metal to stay on the board APU. And so what you're going to do is you're going to lay it down on the right-hand side. This one doesn't have a plate on it, don't mind that. Uh, you're going to lay it down on the right-hand side so that all that liquid metal, which is located about here, will be able to efficiently heat, or not heat, but cool down the system. It'll pull up nicely on the APU in there, because um, obviously if it's standing up, you know, that liquid metal is gonna drip to the bottom because of course it's a liquid. Um, and so that's just gonna cause automatic issues with uh, heat distribution, and we don't want that happening. I also have another video that goes through like a whole 
uh, I delve into all of it and show you exactly um, the issues and stuff like that. But as far as it goes with the older models, um, you're going to want to lay it down on the right hand side. So if it's the one with the disk drive, you're just going to lay that down on the disk drive side. Uh, if it's a digital, you're going to lay it down on the right hand side. And the, uh, another way that you can tell is whenever you lay it down, the HDMI port, um, the letters will be above here and they'll be sitting upright HDMI so that you can see them there. And that is basically telling you that the, you know, the console should be sitting this way to begin with. I mean, that's like, that's just like a little fact right there. So as you can see the HDMI right there. And also if you lay it down like this, as you can see this HDMI port right here is already busted. Um, and the reason for that is when it was standing up, you know, if it got moved either way or even just plugging it up, um, it's easier to break whenever it's standing up. But if you lay it down, the motherboard is sitting underneath the HDMI port. So it's going to be more like the PS4 this way. And um, those ones still broke a lot. They still do break a lot. Uh, however, it'll break less often if you lay it down like this. Um, there's more support when you plug in the HDMI cord into the cable. Um, same thing with like Ethernet and then the USB ports back here. Um, but overall, I would say laying the older models down is probably the best thing that you can do for them. All right, so in the older models, they had different heat sinks in them. Um, this is actually the heat sinks for some of the older models. These aren't the newer ones. Um, but basically, you know, they, they tried to solve the cooling issue, but it doesn't make sense because they tried to solve it with a smaller heat sink. So I don't really understand, you know, what Sony was thinking when they did that. Um, as you can see here, there's a significant difference in these heat sinks. This is one of the oldest models, one of the original models that first came out. And this is like one of the in-between models here. If not, actually this one may be, I'll have to check this real quick. This may be one of the new ones actually. But um, we'll show you why the new ones are better. And it's not just this that's better. Um, obviously, like I said, it's smaller, so it doesn't really make sense. But I'll go ahead and show you guys why uh, the newer models are better than the older ones. All right, so this is one of the newer versions. This is obviously modded. This is one that I made myself. So don't mind this here because this is not normally in this console and it's not normally cut out like this either. But as you can see here, this is the heat sink that is actually on the bottom of the board. Um, so some differences that you can see from the older models to the newer ones is remember how this motherboard here is shaped like this? And you look inside of here and you can tell that there's no motherboard up here in this corner. We'll go ahead and take a closer look at that. So as you can see there, there's no motherboard going up there. And that's because the motherboard in the newer ones are a lot smaller than the motherboards and the older models. So that's another another big difference that you see in the, in the newer PS5s from the older ones. But one of the craziest things for the newest PS5 is that there's a dual sided heat sink. So you got the heat sink on the bottom here, but also we have a heat sink on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this side here so you guys can see that heat sink on the top all right so while I was disassembling this I thought I'd show you guys something here so this is actually part of the motherboard on the original one but as you can see here the motherboard stops right here you see that green right there that's where the motherboard stops so this is another way to tell if it's one of the newer models you literally just take out one screw from the SSD cover here and you'll see this aluminum plate right here and um, that just means it's one of the new models, but of course, as well as the square uh, tape that's right here, and it'll be on both models, the digital and the disc model. All right, let me finish opening this real quick, and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so now that we've got it open, you guys can see here, there's a better heat sink that travels right here, which is where most of that heat builds up inside of the system, and uh, that's because where most of the power goes is right along here, the power rail there. Um, and then of course you have the APU under right here. Um, this little ridge here is just for the uh, plate that secures the APU down to the bottom heat sink right here. Um, so as you can see, this heat sink just looks a little better. It's a dual sided, you know. The other ones still had this little vent here, uh, but they did not have all of this copper tubing going through right here. And one thing that I have noticed is if you stand this one straight up, 
and you're playing it, it's actually okay. It's not like the best um, with the liquid metal inside of there, but it is okay. You know, so it it's less likely to have overheating issues than the than the older models. However, it can still have those issues, but I have not had anyone come into my shop yet complaining about overheating, game randomly turning off or anything like that with one of the newer models. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of a different setup when it comes to the disk drive as well. Um, it's a little bit smaller, this little connector here, and the disk drive actually hooks up right here on both of these, but everything is underneath the side panel that we just had on. Now with the older models, uh, the disk drive, the, the cables that go to it were actually on the top. So the ribbon cable was still underneath the plastic plate. However, this little plug-in guy right here was going over the top of that plastic plate. There's not, not really like a big deal with that or anything, but you know, this just seems a little bit more effective, makes it a little bit easier to take apart uh, without having to stress out about that cable over that plate. Um, now don't mind all of this, these are just my RGB lights inside of there, that's not, this is not how your console is going to look with these going on up here, um, but this is one of the newer ones and as you can see here, the board is definitely smaller, let me grab the other board for comparison. Alright, so this is a smaller board and this is the bigger board, right, so as you can see there, this one has like a U shape coming over the top of it where the fan normally goes, um, and this will be sitting this way inside of there so that's like a full-on comparison of how it would be sitting as you can see there a huge size size difference um there still is power issues going on um which is another thing that we need to hit so we're going to go ahead and start talking about the power issues this is your ps5 power supply right here um this sits under the motherboard and the little prongs for the motherboard slide right in here um, there has been a ton of power issues going on with PlayStation 5s. I get calls about it all the time. The best thing that I can tell you to prevent power issues is, for one, plug it into a wall. Do not plug it into one of those power strips or anything like that. Surge protectors, as they call them, uh, it will not protect your PS5. It's actually more likely to die if you plug it in one of those power surge strips. Um, so. The power supplies themselves, they don't seem too bad. Um, a lot of times, uh, whenever like a surge happens or um, you know your uh, surge strip there, um, if it causes any issues with the PS5, it's actually not going to kill the power supply most of the time. Um, it'll just affect the motherboard and completely destroy your system. Um, yeah, that's, that's the unfortunate thing. However, um, sometimes it is just the power supply, which is nice. Uh, you can just swap them out. They're not too expensive. I know when they first um, started having problems with these, when the PS5 first came out, um, people were trying to sell these power supplies for like $280 and up. Um, they were crazy priced. Um, now they're a lot cheaper, uh, like $200 cheaper, which you know just is insane to me, but you know, supply and demand, I understand. Um, it's a lot more affordable now to fix power issues with the PlayStation 5, but at the same time it's still a nuisance and it's one of the things that you really need to know about um, because these consoles are high maintenance and they require a lot of, you know, just being careful and being conscious, conscious about what you do with them such as plugging them directly into a wall outlet instead of a surge protector. Along the same lines as uh, power issues, there is the issue with F7002 right here, which hopefully we can bring that in closer there. This area right here, as you can see, that chip is gone. It's actually gone on both sides, um, and that's because this was done at another repair place. They kind of just took the chips off, never put them back on. Um, but these areas right here are tend to what short out the most on the older models. All right, sorry about that. Um, so there are other power issues, you know, the south bridge can go out, everything like that. So um, the PS5 is prone to power issues. Um, so definitely, if you're gonna buy it from like a store or something, you wanna get a, uh, a warranty for it through Sony. Um, that's probably the best way that you can go about it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to bring it to a repair shop like myself. Um, and it's still not very cheap to fix power issues on these. 
Um, it still costs quite a bit of money because if it's not just the power supply, um, you know, there are other things that need to be tested on this. And so basically we have to apply uh, voltage to the motherboard and um, other shops do other things. You can just go through and test everything individually as well. But the fastest way that I found is through thermal imaging and applying voltage to them. Um, but that's just a little bit about what we do as a shop. Um, but there, there are power issues with the PlayStation 5 and there are ways to prevent it as best as you can. Um, so of course you want to make sure that if you have one of the older models you lay it down so that liquid metal stays on the APU. Um, and then of course you want to plug it into a wall. You don't want to plug it into a surge protector uh, because that's just, that's just asking for it to be killed. Um, so next thing we're going to go ahead and talk about is the HDMI ports which as you can see here this one has been taken off. Um, and the reason for that is obviously this had a bad HDMI port on it. It's a little bit messy. This is kind of just like my junk board. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you on a different board what the HDMI port looks like. All right, well, it looks like I took all the HDMI ports off of all the boards. Um, that's most of the time that's the actual problem with them. Uh, however, um, it's not always the issue. There can be other reasons why you're not getting a video um, or anything like that on a PlayStation 5. But this is the most common one here, and as you can see, this port here has actually been pushed out of the back of the console, or out of the uh, port here. So you gotta think that this port, these little feet in here, are still sticking in the motherboard when this happens. So a lot of times, as you can see here, where that's pushed back, it'll knock all these components off back here, um, which is no good. Uh, it's a real nuisance, and then you have to replace all these components here. Uh, so you just want to be really careful with the HDMI port when you plug it in and unplug it. Uh, I don't recommend like moving these everywhere because that's how they break most of the time is people are either plugging them in, unplugging them, doing all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and that can cause obviously the HDMI to break easier. Uh, especially when you go to plug it in, you want to make sure that you don't plug in the HDMI cord all the way. Um, I'll go ahead and grab an HDMI cord and show you why real quick. Alright, so I grabbed a little bit better of a port because I don't want to mess up this HDMI cord, obviously. But as you can see here, the size differences. Um, yeah, your HDMI cord, if you were to push it to where it's flush with the console, because these ports do sit pretty flush with the back of the console. Um, let's put it side by side for you to see. As you can see there, it's super easy to push that back. So if you go to plug this in, you see how that part is still sticking out right there? This is fully inserted into the HDMI port. But a lot of times, that means that this part right here isn't flush with the console, and your brain is just freaking you out telling you, you need to push it in all the way. And that's when you go to push it in all the way and it pushes the back out here. And that's what causes your HDMI port to break most of the time. Uh, another thing that you can do is when you go to push it in, I don't know if you can see it here, but these pins, it's not really focusing, the pins on the back of this port here, you see how some of them are shining and some of them aren't? That's because some of the pins got pushed back and some of the pins were still connected to the motherboard. Um, this is another thing that happens when you forcefully push it in. If the, if the inside plastic piece doesn't break out through the back, um, it can actually push the whole port back. Um, even if the legs are soldered in the board great and everything like that, um, it can still cause that damage. So another thing is when we're turning our system, if we leave it plugged in, I'm going to try to find a port real quick to show you this, but if you leave it plugged in, it can actually bend the, the front of this port here down or it can bend it up depending on standing up the console and if you turn it left and right, it can break that. I'm going to give you a visual of what that looks like real quick. All right, so we have a port here, and this one on this side looks fine. You know, nothing looks too wrong. Uh, these feet here are pushed back this way a little bit, but as you can see on this side, those feet are pushed forward. So obviously when this console was sitting there, they plugged up the HDMI cord, and, you know, they turned it, at, or let's see, they probably turned it this way, um, and when they did that, these feet here, they broke down, and these ones broke backwards and so it caused a twist on this which caused it to contort and when that happened as you can see here let's see all of those pins on this side here got lifted up 
So these little pins on the back are still where they're supposed to be, but the pins on the other side all got lifted up. And so that's what, which caused a no video error. And so that's what the issue was for this one. Um, but of course it was also split. Um, and most of the time this tab on the inside is fine, um, but it does break. Um, and the breakage points are usually on either side of it. Um, which will also cause no video. Obviously there won't be a full connection. Uh, sometimes it can just give you like low resolution, but it will eventually go out. The HDMI ports are not very well built in my opinion. As you can see, all of the weight of the HDMI cord itself is going to be on the front of this port. And so it just, and, and you, gotta, you gotta think, there's only feet in the back. So it's gonna cause a lot of stress just moving the console around uh, with this plugged in or even plugging in the cord and throwing it in a bag or something like that, wrapping it around the system, it will break 100% of the time. Um, but yeah, all of the weight is on the front of the port here. Um, I'll give you a visual of an Xbox Series X port. All right, so this is an Xbox Series X port. As you can see, the feet are a lot wider than the PS5 port. And then, of course, these are basically glued down to the board. They use a little piece of epoxy on them to hold them down. Um, but the PS5 port doesn't have that. Um, it's literally held down by solder, which would normally be fine. Like with the Xbox port, it would be normally, it would, it would, it'd be perfect, actually. Um, you wouldn't need the epoxy under there, necessarily. Uh, the reason why this port was taken off is the tab on the inside was broken. Um, so these ports are built a lot better than the PlayStation 5, so you just need to be wary of these ports. Uh, you gotta think fragile when you're plugging in the HDMI cord and uh, try not to break it. All right, so here's another visual of the HDMI port. Um, it's up in here, and as you can see, that's the bottom of it. So again, you know, your console's standing up straight like this. If you lay it down on the right-hand side, that port is going to be underneath the motherboard, and it's gonna say HDMI on top right here. And so that way you know that this port is actually sitting upright. If you flip it the other way and you go to plug it in, it's gonna break a lot easier. You don't wanna do that. So you wanna make sure you lay it down on the right hand side so that it says HDMI up top. All right, well I appreciate you guys watching. Um, just remember, these are some things that you should know before you decide to buy a PlayStation 5. Um, just know they're great consoles. It's like a mini computer basically. Uh, they do have issues with them, but every electronics item does have an issue with them. The newer version of the PlayStation 5, um, I helped you identify it. So if you were to buy like a used one from somebody else, uh, you would know like GameStop or something like that, or even Facebook Marketplace. Uh, you'll know what you need to look for, such as the tape, um, in order to identify one of the newer ones. If it is one of the older ones, it's fine. Uh, the only thing that you'll have to do is obviously you will have to lay it down. Uh, with the newer ones, you can stand them up as long as you're careful with the HDMI port. Um, but they are a lot better than the older ones, considering that they have the dual-sided heat sink there. Um, that's something you really want inside of your console. You don't want it to have the turning off randomly during the PlayStation 5 games and all that. But be sure to check out our other video where we show you about the PS5 overheating issues. I think we have two of them on our channel that you can go ahead and look through how to prevent it, how to stop it from happening once it's already happened. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The, the two biggest issues, well I'd say three biggest issues are power supply going out, um, the HDMI port giving out, which is probably the biggest issue. That's the number one thing that we repair here as a repair shop. And then of course you have the overheating slash software glitch issue with the PlayStation 5, but these are just some things that you want to keep in mind. Um, you know, and I showed you ways that you can prevent it and everything like that, because you want your console to last, because it is not cheap uh, to fix these consoles, just being honest with you. Um, a couple franchise places, you know, they charge, for HDMI repairs, they charge around $220 and up, uh, depending on where you get it done. Um, some bigger cities, like Boston, uh, they, they actually charge like $300 to get an HDMI port replaced. Um, we don't do that because we think it's uh, a little cheap. We do it really fast. We do it in 30 to 45 minutes. Um, however, uh, you know, we don't get as many consoles as the name brand places, franchises, and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, 
Uh, pretty much everything when it comes to the PlayStation 5 is a little bit pricey to fix. Um, but overall, I would say that these are really great consoles when it comes to gameplay. Uh, they have lots of great great uh, games as well um, through the PlayStation Network and all of that stuff, PlayStation Plus. Um, great consoles, um, just letting you guys know about a few of the issues that you need to look out for for your PlayStation 5 and a few things that you need to know before you decide to purchase a PlayStation 5. So I thank you guys for watching so much. Today is uh, the 4th of July, Independence Day. Um, so just hope you guys have fun. If you watch this video on Independence Day, I mean, you're, you're awesome. Thanks for watching, you know, because I'm actually uploading it today. So thank you guys for watching so much. And be sure to be on a lookout for some more of our videos. Uh, we do lots of tips and tricks and stuff like that for PlayStation 5s, Xboxes, anything like that. Um, just because, you know, as a repair place, we see these things so often. We see so many different uh, consoles come in here with issues and we just want to let you guys know about them ways to prevent it and all that kind of stuff so uh, make sure you like and subscribe uh, we have a bunch of other videos that you guys are welcome to check out we will be posting more videos as well so thank you very much for watching mm -hmm.